All right, we are going to talk about GitMind today, which you can get to by just going to gitmind.com. Um, this is their front page where you'll go to if you haven't logged in yet. It's easy to create an account, but you do need to create an account to do anything. So that can be an issue for some of our younger students. If that's a roadblock for you, then I would find a different product that doesn't require a login to work. Um, I was hoping that the download now option would allow you to um, edit it without an account. Um, but no, that's not the case. Even in the, even in the desktop version, um, you have to have an account to play with anything. They do have a freemium that's fairly robust. Um, and so let's, uh, let's check it out. So this is my space. I've actually been using it for um, my graduate school. Um, and so let's take a look at a couple of my maps to see what we've got going on here. So this is an outline that I made for a hypothetical graduate level course that I designed. And so it's got the title of the course. It's got the sort of three core competencies. And then underneath here, um, it has the more specific, like detailed breakdown of what people are doing, what the content is there. Um, so this is what the sort of space looks like and we'll play around with another one in just a minute but i kind of want to give you a sense of the different uh sort of things that we have here so you can have up to 10 maps in the free version before you have to start paying for things which is actually pretty um pretty generous you can delete things as you don't need them anymore so i could see using this with students and not having it be a big deal um Okay, which one did I want to go to? So in this one, this is that same course that I have, um, but it gets into some specific readings that are into these sort of three big areas in here. Um, you'll notice that there are these little minus signs here. If I want to um, make my graph look a little bit more clean, um, if I want to use it to present, I would probably close everything down, start from here, and then as I talk about these things, they start popping up. Uh, you'll notice this is a link to from one node to another node. Uh, these little boxes and bits of text are called nodes in here. Um, and I can, I can lock down these other things as well. Um, I wanna show you one more because it has a sort of key feature that I wanna show off. Um, I didn't get too far with this map, I'm not going to lie, like I didn't even retitle this one, but it allows you to put these little icons in here, um, which you can use as sort of a key. So if you're um, wanting students to highlight the vocabulary word in a big concept map of all the different things that they've learned, you can assign a particular symbol for vocab and they would flag any of their nodes that are a vocabulary word with that. Just an idea. So uh, let's get into it and make a new map. Um, there are a ton of templates, so if you head over here to templates, um, the education band has a lot that you might want to look at. We've got essay writing, verb types, a lot of different things, and if you choose these, um, it will just populate that whole map for you. So this Korean history timeline, if I click on it, um, it, will, it will do this for me. So here you could replace these different, um, these different eras of Korean history with whatever it is you want for a timeline. You would keep that numbered part. You would keep the little um, connecting arrows. So you can use them flexibly. Personally, I don't, I don't find the templates to be something I'm going to use if I'm actually making a map, but they are a good idea. Like sometimes I get good ideas from them because there's a lot that are in there of different ways that you could use it. Um, so we're going to go back to my docs, which is where our stuff lives. And then this new mind map button um, will be there. They also do flow charts, uh, which I don't find to be as exciting uh, as mind maps, but that's just me. Um, and so here we have our main theme and we can change the map theme really easily. There are some recommended ones here. You can change the color palette even within those. There are even more if you go in here. So I just want to pick a good colorful one. I'm going to go from classic to colorful. Uh, let's do this gingham one. That sounds like fun. Okay. And then I can collapse this. It's bouncing and telling me I can also hit escape to exit. So it likes hotkeys. And uh, so I have to decide on a theme. 
Um, I've been doing a lot of stuff with the James Webb Space Telescope, so let's do that. Okay, so I've renamed my node just by clicking on it. If you double click, it'll highlight it and you can just put in whatever you want for your main idea there. To make a new node off of it, I can click insert tub, sub node or insert node and either of those I think will do what I want it to do. It's also telling me I can hit the tab key if I wanna do that instead. I'm gonna click for this one, I'll hit tab for some of the other ones. So what are some important things about the James Webb Space Telescope? It is a space telescope. Um, if I hit tab here, I'm going to make, oh, no, I'm not going to do anything. Tab is not working while I'm typing. Uh, if I hit enter, that finalizes it. If I hit tab, it'll go to a smaller topic branch. So um, I'm just going to put outside Earth's atmosphere because that's important. And then um, if I want to do a parent node, that's shift and tab. Oh, I didn't want that. So I want to get rid of that. I'm going to right click on it or hold control and click if you're on a Mac. Delete that. It deletes the sub node too. We're learning together. Um, so I just lost my whole thing because I hit my little scroll wheel too hard. Sorry for jumping around like that. Um, so I'm going to hit tab to make a new sub node. It's also an infrared is the main sort of part of the EM spectrum that it's looking at. Um, and it also has a, a micro. It has a cool thing it can do with spectra, which is a micro shutter array. It lets it look for um, exoplanets is one of the many things. So up here I was saying the space telescope is important because it's outside of Earth's atmosphere. Um, and then I want to connect this back to the infrared part of it because that's why it's important. Didn't close my parenthesis. That's going to drive me nuts. Sorry about that. Uh, so here I have insert relationship to nodes. That gives me this fun little springy thing that I can click on any of my existing nodes for. So I'm just going to click on the EM Spectrum one. It says press space to edit. So I can say that the atmosphere blocks IR light. It doesn't block all of it, but it blocks some of it. Um, when I click off of that, those fun little uh, guides disappear. But if you use them, like say I don't want it touching any of these things or I want it to be a little bit more dramatic. Um, you can adjust those really intuitively. That's fun. So now that I've chosen my topic, I don't really like the gigam background. I can go back to theme. I also have this change theme button up here that just sort of randomly rolls them. If I want to click through on that, I am sure we could all spend some time uh, playing around with that. But I say I want to pick one because I want it to have a dark background maybe this multi-branch color i want to be like this instead you can see how that changes the different ones i like that you can choose um, different backgrounds and get kind of granular there you can also um, if you have a node selected you can um, change the style of the node um, the shape like let's say i want to start with an oval you can do that really easily um, you can change the layout, so these are going to move them around into different formats. Let's make sure that's squared up really good for that one. Uh, there's that fishbone diagram. Most of these probably don't, are, are fairly interchangeable, doesn't really matter, but it gives you the option, which is nice. I'm going to leave it on that one for now. Um, icon is where you can get into those keys, like I was talking about with the one where I had the little red bell. Um, the priority and progress is really nice if you're using this to sort of organize a group activity. Um, you can have kids report on the progress, like let's say if they're, you know, part of the way through on this one, but they haven't even started this one yet. Um, so that can be a way for them to sort of keep on track and to communicate you with you um, what their progress is. Um, Priorities too can be nice if they go through and mark what they think are the most important or least important, but it also can just add some fun visual things like, oh, look, there's the night sky. And, oh, 
let's let's look at the sun that's where our light is coming from you can see you can apply multiple ones on there so you don't have to pick and choose should we find out how many different ones you can apply looks like as many as you like a ton oh but you see this one will change it will not let you apply multiples from progress my guess is priority is the same so some of these you only get to pick one some of these you can pick many way more than we needed to get into but still fun um, i want to add a comment let's say we've got that option up here we can add in links we can add in images um, but the comment feature is nice if you have kids share these with you you can give them some comments on there so i'm going to put in a comment so interesting tell me more about that Okay. And then I have the comment in there. I hope I'd stayed in there. Probably didn't, let's say. Just a key smash. Okay, it did. So now these have these little comments on here that you can see. Um, the last tab down here is cooperation. I can invite collaborators. Uh, if I give them the link, they'll be able to edit with it. Uh, if I send them an invite from email, that's another option. Um, that seems like where you would want to go for, for a collaboration, but honestly, up here, the share menu gives you some more options. Um, in addition to copying to social media, you can do this can save copy option. So if you want them to be able to do that, and then this link, I, you can copy and just paste into whatever LMS you're using. If you want all the kids to see a particular thing, um, so those are the basic features. I do just want to talk about the save option here. Um, nope, just kidding. That wasn't what I wanted to talk about. It does save automatically, but it doesn't hurt to hit the little floppy disk. Um, there's a couple of ways to export your progress in here. If you don't want to, um, if you're, if you're finished with a design and you want to share it to somewhere else, or if you want them to submit it and turn it in, there is an outline format here, which has an automatic export to word button. So, oh, if I click on that, it takes a second and then it downloads the whole thing. So here is my Word version, including my comments um, of this. Uh, you'll notice that this can also, you can add things from here. So um, what else? I'm just gonna throw EM Spectrum in there again. Um, and so if I want to add another nod, node, I can say named. Okay. And so then we can see on here, we've got that. can collapse this. I do have this zoom in, zoom out down here. It can be a little hard to see, especially because I've opted for the dark background, but it's there. You can go full screen. Um, and there's a few other things down here, like you can see all the hotkeys uh, that you can use to sort of navigate. That's the tab, that's the undo, redo that are standard. Um, but if I want to export it, I've got some options here. Um, I can save it as a PDF, a Word, a text. You can save it as a GitMine file. So if you have the application downloaded to your computer, that's one way to do that. Um, ping, honestly, I feel like is the best option. And if you say transparent background, then when you export it, it'll be just the words in the outline and the bubbles, right? It won't have whatever background is in there. You can really easily put that into a slide deck. So if you're having kids do these outlines for um, something that they're learning, they can put this mind map into um, some project that they're showing off or even for an end of the year type of um, like overview where they've done several of these. Uh, so I saved this, I gave it a name. It's not showing up in here because I haven't refreshed, but once I do, if I wanna get rid of it, I can't just click on it because that opens it. I wanna right click or control click if you're on a Mac um, and say delete. Uh, I can also move, copy it, rename, unshare, or share from this menu. Um, so that's how you would just move those things to trash to keep yourself under that 10 for your uh, free type of thing. I hope that that uh, gets you a little bit excited about it. I like this one. 
Um, it's really pretty, which makes it easier for me to, to want to use it. Um, and honestly, it's got some really powerful ways to sort of share information uh, out that a lot of the other sort of mind mapping things don't have. They want you to stay in their program, but the export feature really sells it for me. Hope you enjoy and make some cool stuff.